<laughs> I'm going to break these down real fast. or something, a lot of the information has not changed. They are, the ABC XYZ is not real good on the mic problems right now. The other is Beekeeping for Dummies from John Wiley. We all know the Dummies books, the all books. Excellent paperback, good information. It'll answer a lot of your questions. My preference, and this is really just because I started with this one, is the Hive and the Honeybee by uh, Daydan. Uh, same kind of thing as ABC XYZ. You have to have one of those three books because that's going to answer a lot of your questions. You say, why did my bees do this? Why did my bees do that? And these will be, one of these will be answered. There's one out called the Beekeeper's Bible. Now, it's okay, but it's not great. Okay, there's recipes and a lot of stuff, but this is kind of this falls into the second category of maybe. It's not a must-have, it's a maybe. So the other is, and this is this is there's a couple more probably. Um, Tammy Horn's book, Bees in America. This is a history of bees and beekeeping in the United States. Now Tammy came here three, four, five years ago, spoke to the Beekeepers Association. It's, really, it's a wonderful history. So I really recommend this. You can find this in the libraries. You can find it in used bookstores. Just very nicely done. Another one is Bees by Carl von Frisch. And the, Frisch, von Frisch won the Nobel Prize for determining what bee dances mean, why the bees you know, move around and stuff. And this is is you think, gosh, this is just, why are they doing this? What does this mean? What does this mean? So this you can find in a lot of different editions. Dover publishes one, and you can find them in the used bookstores. But it's, it, this is another of the must-haves. Last, what, was it two years ago when uh, Dewey Karen came, gave the lecture? Okay. Uh, Dewey Karen is a, he's a professor at the University of Maryland, and he was at uh, Cornell for a long time. He came and gave a lecture. He uh, has written a book, Honeybee Biology and Beekeeping. He keeps bees, he keeps Africanized bees in South America. And to listen to this man, the, he, his, his theory is the way to get rid of the mites is for a shorter uh, gestation period for our bees, shorter and smaller. Okay, instead of a 21 day gestation period for workers, go to an 18 or 19 day, and that interrupts the mite cycle, and that will eliminate it. But Dewey Karen, this is expensive as hell. It's like a $75 book if you can find it. Uh, but he's very, very well done. Good book. Okay, those are the must-haves. The maybes, there's a lot of things out there. You, who, who did 
the photography at the, at the state fair. Did you? Okay. Have you ever seen this? B? These are photomicrographs. Photomicrography of bees. So you look and you go, damn, they got hair on their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Stunning book. It really is. They're all black and white. Um, there's another one here. Who is that B by? That the B is by Rosalind Fisher. It's published by Princeton University. It's only about, you can get it in paperback, about 20 bucks. Okay. The other one, is it I made a net bring this. Is it underneath the Juvie books? Or you shared it with someone? There's another one called The Buzz About Bees, published in Germany by Springer Verlag, that has the most beautiful bee photographs you can imagine. Costs about 45 bucks. It's hardcover. Uh, very nicely done. So if you want to think outside the photography box, that's one to really look for is the buzz about bees. Is that Carrie Lynn Winters? Carrie Lynn Winters, is that the... The buzz? The buzz about bees. Mm, I don't oh, remember. I've got it in here somewhere. No. It may be. Okay. There are some others that... Uh, you know, Tom Seeley was here, what, just a, a, a few months ago? Okay, Honeybee Democracy. Uh, why bees make the decisions they do. Okay, this is Annette Colbert, she's my uh, amanuensis. <laughs> the bee and natural history. Well, the one thing I like about this, there's a lot of color photographs, but it also has uh, range maps that show you where you'll find these bees. Yeah, okay. Nice book. It's not, it's another one of those kind of, maybe it'd be nice. Okay. Honeybee from uh, uh, Gould and Gould. This is uh, Scientific American. This is another one of the why bees do what they do. Okay. You can find these in the used bookstores. One that I, I, boy, I just can't tell you how much I enjoyed this one. The Forgotten Pollinators by uh, Stephen Buckman, B-U-C-H-M-A-N, and Gary Paul Nabin. The bulk of this occurs in Arizona and northern Mexico. But we like, it. Lulu was talking about uh, bumblebees and 1,100 different species of native bees. We have these huge numbers of native bees, and our bees are, um, they're generalists. They go out and they collect everything, which may be robbing from some of these native pollinators. So, and it's not just bees, but it's hummingbirds and ants and beetles and things like this. Stunningly good book. Gary Paul David, The Forgotten Pollinators. There's a, there's a whole nother class of books. Uh, well, let's do this here. There's older books. Honey Plants of North America. Okay. You, you, this is a tough one to find, but if you want to know, somebody says, oh, well, it's Facilia, and you go, what the hell is Facilia? Mm -hmm. Okay, you can look it up in here, and it'll tell you that it's scorpion weed, and it gives you a, 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 a real good look. Here's another one, American Honey Plants by Pellet, P-E-L-L-E-T-T, -E -T, Frank Pellet. These are, these are both hard to find. Um, First Lessons in Beekeeping by Date Amp, okay? You can find the paperback of this readily. You know, uh, Ken sells them at the growers market, uh, probably in the honey house and stuff. But this is a, a very good basic introduction to beekeeping. Uh, and then Kim Flotham's book, The Honey Handbook, on, on how to harvest honey, how to grade honey, different kinds of honey. You, know, you, you can try the, the hurt honey and the, and the buckwheat and you get an idea of, of the different kinds of things that are out there. Then here's this third class of books that you go, oh, well, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It's a, everybody and their brother who's a beekeeper has probably thought about writing a book on bees. So you got 
the honey trail and a world without bees and bees and honey and uh, <laughs> just there are hundreds of these things out there. Okay. Some of them are good, some of them are not so good. There's a, there are a couple on transporting bees. Uh, one called uh, Following the Bloom by Why Not, W-H-Y-N-O-T, Douglas Why Not, N-O-T-T, -T, excuse me, about the migratory beekeepers. Yeah, that's a whole different ball of wax, guys. You know, transporting three and four hundred hives at a time from you know, Texas to California, things like this, is a good read. Not something I want to do, but uh, Hannah Nordhaus did another one uh, just a couple of years ago. Hannah lived here in Albuquerque growing up. Uh, her dad was the head of Sandia Labs. Uh, so she's got one. Okay, let's see if we're out. Okay, keeping bees just. Writing about bees is a couple of thousand years old. Uh, Lucretius, who was a, uh, a Roman poet in the, the first century before Christ, uh, wrote about bees in his book called On the Nature of Things. Okay. The Bible has four mentions of bees and 61 mentions of honey. One of my favorite uh, quotes is, Your lips distill nectar, my bride. Honey and milk are under your tongue. The scent of your garments is like the scent of Lebanon. <laughs> Boy, you want to get a girl, that's the way to do it, right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Song of Solomon? Yes. Great <laughs> okay. You can find, sometimes, if, if, if you look close, you go out to the used bookstore, you go to the library sale, so you can find odd little things on you know, venomous arthropods, Bee culture in Kansas, Pennsylvania beekeeping, my favorite honey recipes. This is a, another one from Day Damp, How to Keep Bees and Sell Honey. This is from like 1943. <laughs> and another of my favorites, 500 Answers to Bee Questions. You can, you, you, oh, why? Why do my bees do this here? Hive stands for winter, checking stores. Is packing this? All kinds of things. If you really want to get into serious scientific kinds of beekeeping, then you want to look for textbooks. Okay, this is a textbook on insects, entomology. It has about 40 pages on bees, but it also has centipedes and uh, wasps and all kinds of things. So there's that. You can also do here's a this is a book called The Last 10,000 Years. This is about palynology. I, I, this is fossil pollen, okay? Why does pollen last 10,000 years? Because it's really hard, okay? Stephen Buckman, who was a, the author of uh, this, one of the authors of The Forgotten Pollen, I asked him, I said, why is this, why does it last 10,000 years? He said, well, it's impermeable to water. So, you know, it, it, nothing's going to bother it. That's why, and it, but this is archaeology. Unless you're an archaeologist, you're not going to give a rat's ass about this. Huh? Or a bee's butt. Exactly. Yeah. Another of my uh, uh, this is a this is an odd book, insect pollination of cultivated plants. Okay. How are how is an eggplant pollinated? How is chili pollinated? How is uh, how is marijuana pollinated? Okay. Uh, <laughs> There are studies of these kinds. Uh, so if you want to know uh, the kinds of, here's uh, beekeeping in relation to pollination. Okay. You've got a dozen, uh, dozen different things here. Fake Joel, okay. Uh, Andy, cop, coriander. So you'll never find this. If, if you find it, uh, steal it. Pick it up, do something, you know, but that's what to, to really uh, work with. And then, do any of you go out to schools and talk to the schools about bees and beekeeping and stuff? Okay. Every, every year I get requests 
from schools to, uh, hey, come on out and, and talk. So the kids are always pretty receptive. If you have a demo hive, take the demo hive. But there are dozens of books for kids. The Bee Man, Honey Makers, Bees and Wasps, Honey in a Hive, The Life and Times of the Honey Bee. There are all of these books that, for kids that you can sit down and say, oh, hey, look, here, here's what the bee does and here's why it does it, etc., etc., etc. Old 1950s Walt Disney, The Secrets of Life, it's got bees in it. So, pay attention to the newspapers. This is from the Wall Street Journal. Two new books on beekeeping. Uh, Buzz, The Nature and Necessity of Bees and Our Native Bees. So, just look around, pay attention, go through these things. Um, I, I really got started in this. I started book, the book business in 1972, and then I started beekeeping in 1978, so I decided that I better start paying attention. Now we've got the winter coming up. Read. Okay, that's the best thing I can tell you is you read. And there are hundreds of choices. Questions? You mentioned Hannah Norhouse. That book is The Beekeeper's Lament. The Beekeeper's Norhouse, Lament. That's a wonderful read. Really is. It's an absolutely yeah. wonderful read. It's about commercial beekeeping, commercial, commercial and pollinating and almond groves, but it's a wonderful read. Really is, yeah. She lives up in Denver now. She comes down occasionally. And you didn't mention mention the one I just finished, Dr. C. C. Miller, Fifty Years Among the Bees. Fifty Years Among the Bees. I think I have that one here. You probably do. Yeah, here. <laughs> it's it's kind of like reading Langstroth's book. Uh-huh. It's, uh -huh. it's yeah. a it's a heavy read, but there it's are, really good. Yeah, there are hundreds of these things out there. Uh, every beekeeper on God's earth thinks they, they can, oh, hey, my, my view is different. So, and I need to share. Right. So I'm going to turn it over to Annette Colbert, who is, uh, she's an, our, uh, our book expert. And Annette and I have been working on a bibliography for beekeeping, which should, it may be available online, I don't know. It is not yet. Not yet, but it's coming. It's coming. So, okay. <laughs> so. And then you you're up. Let me ask you one question before sure. you leave. Will you kind of leave those out to after a so people can come out and look? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to steal that book. Who's got the microphone? Okay, yeah, here. Want it too? Do you want it too? Huh? Do you want it too? No, I don't want to. <laughs> Since I'm speaking behind you, um, number one, does everybody have one of these? Yes. No. It's a library card. <laughs> this is Albuquerque, yes. Yes, Bernardino County, Albuquerque. If you don't, they're easy to get. You take an ID into your local library, which there are 17 branches in Albuquerque, and you fill out a piece of paper, and they give you one. You don't have to pay for it. So that's where we start tonight, is get your library card. As Joe pointed out, books are out there. We need, as a beekeeping organization, to participate in our library having a collection of bee books. And that means every one of you who reads the Wall Street Journal and sees two new titles, submits the titles to the library and asks them to purchase them. You vote for library bonds every year, either city or county. That money is yours to spend on books. Make them buy what you want. Okay? That's my, that's my soapbox. <laughs> this is a live presentation, so give me Albuquerque Public Library search, and we'll get you here. I'm going to go, I'm going to skip how to search the catalog, because if you don't know, you can see me afterwards, and I will give you a private lesson at your time convenience. I retired from the Albuquerque Public Library. I was their collection development manager. My job was to buy books for the library. Is that Thank a cool you. job? <laughs> Go to my account, and I have to type in my fancy number. 
you first. Oh, ding dong. Thank you. I should have it memorized, but I don't. It's a long number. And this is why you have to have a library card to do these things. Okay, my account gives you all kinds of things, including a search bar. So I go in and I put in, give me a title. Buzz about bees. Buzz about bees. Did I type that right? Yep. There it is. This is the book that Joe had me bring tonight. It's out here somewhere, right? Does the library hold it? Can you tell? I'll go back to the screen. Does everybody see? Four copies? If you need to move up, I can't see the screen. So well, this is Cherry, you guys Cherry Hill, one, Bo, Taylor, Green, and the main library. Okay. You do not have to go to any of those branches to get that book. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and put in a request for it right now. I want this book. The red check mark. They sold. That's it. I love doing this blind. My home library is South Broadway. They've already got my account information. That's how hard it is. They will send you an email or call you, depending on how you set up your account. I like mine coming email, and they hold it for seven days. It's on a special shelf with your name on piece of paper on the spine. And you can pick it up and take it up. So the easy part, right? If they do not hold the book, so Joe, give me a title that is not in print. No, not in print, we can't buy. Wisdom of the Hive. Yeah. Wisdom of the Hive. Wisdom. Oops, can't spell either. <coughs> the democracy. The other one's not there. It's not in print. Yeah. This one? It's not there. It's not in print. Okay. Whoops. If you input all of this information, including your own name, again, and library card number, it gives you all of the instructions. Some of these are optional, some of them are not. The more information you give them, me, the easier it is for me to find the book and purchase it. So, as you scroll down, you will note, that 
There is ISBN 13, not 10. What form would you like it in? Honeybee Democracy in an ebook is not an easy read. It's not meant to be read in an ebook. No photography books are good in ebook format. None. So please, for things that are visual, order paper. Order paper. Order paper. But all the instructions are here. So you can get any book that is in print, that is not a textbook, and is not a rare book, and isn't over a hundred bucks. Those are sort of the limitations, okay? We do not order textbooks at the Albuquerque Public Library for obvious reasons. They change them out every month. Um, if they're over a hundred bucks, it's not that they won't be ordered, but they will be scrutinized before they are ordered. So if we want a book that costs a hundred bucks in the public library, we all, all, everybody needs to request it, okay? If they know there's that kind of call for it, they will order it. Public pressure. So. I usually don't, since they know my name, <laughs> I don't order more than five at a time. Um, but if, if this is something that you guys want to pursue, I highly recommend ordering one this week and ordering one next week. There is constant ordering going on. If you're ordering a bunch, if you have a bunch of books that you want from one publisher, they're probably carried by one commercial house, and it's easier for the library folks to order all of them at one time. So in that case, would you just ask your friends to order it so it doesn't look like it's coming from one person? Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I highly advocate for that. <laughs> yeah. And this goes, I mean, it doesn't have to be me books, obviously. This could be any book that you want in the library. It's your library. So use it that way. Um, that's their job. They must order tons of pop-up books and chewable books. What are the two? Board books for kids. Very disposable items. <laughs> but we order tons of them for the little kids to learn how to use the library. Um, lots of Judy books that Joe showed you many examples of. They just don't order off the, the few that he said were rare. They, they're not going to order them. Number one, library books take a lot of use. And if you follow Joe's advice and he says steal it, <coughs> don't steal it from your library, okay? Please. So if you want a book, you can bring it to the meeting. You know, if you want a special book, bring it to the meeting and ask everyone at the meeting to, yeah. to order it. Let's sure. do that. That's if, a great idea. Yeah. If there's a book that isn't in the collection, the two books from the Wall Street Journal, I mean, okay, I have a huge library of my own, not big books. But I don't buy books unless I have my hands on them first to see what the table of contents looks like, what the indexing looks like, blah, 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 blah. I want the library to buy it first, so I can put my hands on it and then decide if I want to spend money. So, okay, the other thing you guys need to know about is in a library loan. I think if I, oh no. <laughs>
And it does this to you at the library as well. They have a very short timeout period if you don't click. The next thing is, if you can't find one of Joe's rare books, you go to Interlibrary Loan is what I'm looking for. There it is, right at the top. And there's the instructions. Interlibrary Loan will cost you a minimum of $1 and can cost you quite a lot more than that. They will do photocopies of documents. If there's an article in the American Bee Journal that was from 1955 that you want a copy of, you can request it through interlibrary loan. They will charge you printing costs, okay? Not exorbitant usually, but the way this interlibrary loan functions, you can't find a book anywhere in the Albuquerque public system. It's out there. Somebody holds that book. If they are on what's called WorldCat, which you don't need to worry about, it's a huge collection of all libraries, you can borrow it from Harvard, or the Library of Congress, or there's any, there's thousands of library sources. They will ship it here book rate. The lending library's rules apply. So if they have a seven day lending loan, as soon as you check it out from the Albuquerque <laughs> public library, it's going to be due back in like two days after shipping. So, it's worth seeing maybe, it's worth taking to the photocopy machine and copying what you wanted out of it. Um, no copyright law is violated. The, this is how to get rare stuff. Stuff you will never get the library to order. If you want to see a book and it's no longer in print, they can't get the Gutenberg Bible for you. Those don't circulate anywhere. Um, but almost anything else does. And it will cost you a dollar. There's a lot more staff time that goes into it than that. And you do have to obey the lending library rules of getting it back to them. There will be fines, and they are hefty. But this is not, this is accessible. I think you actually, since there's a dollar involved, you actually have to go in to the library and fill out the form. And there again, the more information you give them, the more likely you are to get it. So that's my presentation for tonight. Do you guys have questions? Is there anything you want me to look at at the library? My question is, if you don't live in Bernalillo County, can you actually get a library card? Yes. Library system? Yes. They just want to know where to come and look for you. <laughs> okay. So I'm close to South Bernalillo, so I'll definitely through here. Yeah. Because the Valencia County libraries are kind of And if you are a community member, I believe now, it used to be that you had to be in a long, but now I think for 35 bucks you can get a card at UNM. They provide interlibrary loan. Um, they're not, I'm going to say this diplomatically, they're really not a public library. Okay, so that's, that's all I'll say. But they often have things in their library that you can't get anywhere else that you can go and look at for free. So know that UNM is here. Other questions? Well, I have a comment. I've done both of those, and I just want to say it is as easy as you say it is. I requested a Aware beekeeping book, right. and they got it right away, so they had that in their collection. And then I wanted to get a bee textbook that's like $300, so I interlibrary loaned it, I think from Harvard. I had it for like five days yeah. because they mailed it here. Right. Um, and so, and you do have to do all of that pretty much in person. Pay yes. the dollar, pick it up in person, return it in person, yes. don't just leave it because you want to make sure it gets back yes. out of your hands because otherwise Harvard's coming after you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you lose your library privileges here. Mm -hmm. 
almost instantly if you don't obey interlibrary loan rules from other colleges and universities and public. We'll take away your car because it gives us a bad name. Any other questions? Thank you, Elizabeth. Someone who's done it. And you know, it's funny. So the first thing you did was you showed us that you can have it sent to your library. But I'm not that kind of library goer. I like to, um, you know, like impulse buy. So I purposely go to the different branches and then see what's available. And that's what I'm going to do. Well, it's a good tour of Albuquerque. It tells you a lot about our neighborhoods. Ernie Piles Hole is a library here. Yeah, it's up on Gerard. It's you can't turn around when you go in the door. I mean, it really is like this. Um, huh? No, it's not winter. It's not any kind of friendly. <laughs> it is just tiny, but it was a home, and he left it to the Albuquerque Public Library to be used as a library. Pardon me? It's neighborhood friendly for sure. It's a short walk from my house. Yeah, it is neighborhood friendly. And we have a number of fairly small neighborhood friendly libraries. Most of you that have been to any of the conferences have been to the South Broadway. There's libraries in there with the art and the auditorium and the meeting room. Seabank. Bank has a yeah. library. There's yeah. a little information on the Seabank. Bank. Yes, sir. Uh, just what other comment? First of all, very excellent presentation, but also one other really good resource is the audiobooks. There's probably not many B audiobooks, but you can um, check out audiobooks to your yeah. phone or whatever, and yeah. you can go to the library. Yeah. And there's quite a lot. Audiobooks are great if you, if you have the, if you, I don't want to say, the technology. Both the audiobooks and the books for my iPhone are fabulous. They go anywhere with you, you know, you can listen to them on your commute to Santa Fe, whatever. If you, those of you that live sort of out of townish, audiobooks are fabulous for driving. Uh, <clears throat> a comment about ebooks at this library system. Yes. Um, I think you have to be a determined user of an ebook to make that system work for you. Yes. I, uh, wanted to get into a book that was some 400 pages long. It was available as an e-book. It didn't have pictures. It was all words with just chapter separations. But each time I had it on a tab in my browser and left it for a little while, it went away. And I had to log back in and find a place again and then read it. Um, I found that very tiring. It's, you know, your computer screen does not have the reflectance of it. Of a Kindle, for example, which might be a better alternative. Yeah. Long story short, Amazon Books will never again. I just went and bought it. There's easier. other options that are easier, and I will tell you that we get tremendous numbers of complaints about the ebooks. Um, it's also high intensity learning curve for the staff because everybody has different technology and they want it to work on all their technology and it requires the staff taking workshops in Apple, in PC, in Android, in because they all function differently with the process. You go to Amazon and well, at least Kindle, you have to buy their product to read their book. Okay? The library is trying to meet everybody's technology preferences. I think you can read a PDF on Kindle, but you get anybody's format, just however it gets poured into the Kindle. The technology is still so new, if I'm not mistaken, we got ebooks in 2003, maybe? And that's all we had time to learn how to program for them, how to do the input for them, how to get the output from them, blah, blah, blah. So it's not a field that is easy for anybody. <laughs> Other questions and comments by the Albuquerque Library? 
Okay, go look at Joe's books. Want any other questions answered about the library? I'm happy to sit here and type. Thank you. Thank you.